Hello everybody, you're welcome back again to the Reggae Appreciation Society. Heated rivalries and feuds in popular Jamaican music have always been an integral part of its fabric since sound systems like those belonging to Coxwoman Dodd and Duke Reed started battling for turf dominance on the streets of Kingston in the 1950s. It's a phenomenon that's always boosted the quality and popularity of the music industry and not to mention increased record sales. There have been countless legendary beefs over the years that have gone into the history books. But long before Super Cat was battling Bounty Killer or Shabaranks and Ninja Man were at each other's throats, the greatest, most entertaining and funniest head-to-head -head in the history of reggae music was the epic lyrical war that erupted between reigning dancehall DJ in the stylish, elegant and witty Iroy and the fast-rising, fiery, aggressive Prince Jasbo, who was determined to knock his older counterpart off his perch. This legendary feud, which kicked off in 1975, rocked Jamaican music to its core as each DJ's diss track hit the streets. It was also picked up internationally, especially in the UK, due to the efforts of veteran reggae DJ David Rodigan, who covered the beef extensively. It was by no means the first major musical war in Jamaica, as ska pioneer Prince Buster had been engaged in a heated feud with singer Derek Morgan and producer Leslie Kong in the early 1960s. But this was on a scale never seen before, as it was loaded with drama, comedy and tons of entertainment. Now without further ado, let's take a look at the epic beef between Iroy and Prince Jasbo. By 1975, Iroy was an established DJ godfather and Jasbo was a hot rising star who had made a name for himself, recording first for Coxon Dodd, then Glenn Brown and Lee Scratch Perry. But before that famous clash kicked off that year, both men had gone head to head years before on the sound system scene. When they first met, Iroy was already a big star in Jamaica after emerging as a DJ with the Snow Bunny sound system in 1968. It was New Year's Eve in 1970 at a local dance in Spanish town and two opposing sound systems sent two DJs to battle. Iroy was on the mic for Roddy's Supreme Sound System, while the opposing Killer Whip Sound System sent their teenage sensation in the young Prince Jasbo. Iroy won that exchange on the night, but Jasbo put in a scorching performance that made it a close contest. In the audience that evening was legendary producer Clement Coxon Dodd, who was so impressed by Jasbo's talent that he told him to come round to Studio One the next day. Jasbo's collaboration with Studio One produced several hit singles like 1972's Crab Walking, School, Fool for Love and Imperial that placed him in the conversation as one of Jamaica's top DJs and set the stage for his eventual clash with Iroy. It all started in 1975 when the owner of Monica Record Store in Toronto, Canada came to Jamaica looking to record a couple of singles with some hot Jamaican artists that would be put together by legendary reggae producer Bonnie Striker Lee. The first musicians he asked to record were I Roy and Prince Jasbo. So Bonnie Lee invited both guys to King Toby's studio to lay their vocals on the rhythms that he had put together. In the studio that day were I Roy, Tapazuki, Scientist, Bonnie Lee and Jasbo. Bonnie Lee first called in Prince Jasbo to the recording booth and roll tape to record. But for some inexplicable reason, Jasbo's flow was off that day. He kept jumbling up his lyrics and couldn't get a feel for the rhythm. After struggling for almost two hours and sweating it out in front of the microphone, Bonnie Lee got very frustrated with Jasbo because in those days, studio time was very expensive and was paid for by the hour. So Bonnie Lee told Jasbo to come out of the booth and asked Iroy to get in and do a microphone test on the rhythm meant for Jasbo. So Iroy got into the booth, put on his headset and told King Toby to roll the tape. Iroy's first lines were, Prince Jasbo, if you were a jukebox, I wouldn't put a dime in your slot. Move out the way. Iroy was not only the most eloquent DJ of his time, but also the most humorous. And his opening lines caused everyone in the studio to erupt in laughter. Everyone of course, except Jasbo, who was embarrassed and angry. Iroy's flow was, as usual, impeccable and catchy. And Bonnie Lee, sensing the opportunity, decided to record Iroy's sound tests as a single and instigate what would become a series of clashes. For viewers interested in listening to the songs that both men would exchange in their beef, not to worry, as we've left a link to all the tracks in the description section, so you can check them out after watching this video and getting the full context. So let's continue. Bonnie Lee named the single Straight to Jasbo's Head, a 3 minute plus delight that angered Jasbo and got good reception in the streets, not to mention good sales figures. About a week later, 
Bonnie Lee, the instigator of this beef and money spinner, met up with Prince Jasbo and told him that Iroy's track had the streets laughing at him, telling him that he had to respond for his pride's sake. So Jasbo decided to respond, but he probably wasn't happy with Bonnie Lee either. So he decamped and went to record his response with producer Pete Weston at a different studio. The product of that session was a scorching track straight to Iroy's head, in which he famously taunted Iroy as a Uroy imitator. Iroy, it must be said, had unlimited stamina for beef and responded with the track Padlock, which he recorded at the Hukim Brothers Channel 1 studios. He opened the track with an intro where he was asking for directions to the home of Princess Jasbo. In the track, he mocked Jasbo for allowing Bonnie Lee set him up for a whipping and unleashed one of the most popular diss lines in dance hall clash history when he said, When I'm through with Jasbo's chest, not even ice water will he be allowed to digest. Jasbo hadn't even recovered from that diss when an incident would provide more ammunition to Iroy's lyrical arsenal. Jasbo had been on a sound clash with Big Youth and controversy had erupted over Jasbo supposedly stealing Big Youth's lyrics. This didn't go down well with Big Youth's manager, Trevor Douglas, aka Lego Beast. Lego Beast caught Jasbo in the streets one day and whacked him over the head with the bottle, causing Jasbo to dive under a bus parked close by, scamper out from under it, tear out of North Parade and run past Kincaid Pharmacy all in downtown Kingston. Iroy didn't waste any time. He went into the studio and recorded the hilarious track, Jasbo Hafi Run. The song featured a brief conversation between Iroy and dancehall legend Prince Farai before Iroy launched into the rhythm with the taunt. It happened just the other day. Him run past Kincaid. Him couldn't get no first aid. Jasbo, you've got to flee. So leave man lyrics alone, you little bumblebee. <laughs> oh man. By all standards, a withering musical missile that Jasbo didn't take lightly at all. Jasbo responded with a track that went for Iroy's jugular in the track Girl Boy Iroy. In this song, he made fun of Iroy's stylish and dapper clothes in a vicious three minute taunt. But despite this response, Jasbo seemed to have lost steam and ran out of stamina to continue the exchange with Iroy. So Bonnie Lee, who was enjoying the enormous publicity and surge in record sales, tried his best to keep the beef going by recruiting his brother-in-law in ska pioneer Derek Morgan to aim some shots at Iroy. As mentioned earlier, Derek Morgan had had a well-publicized feud with Prince Buster on one side and him and producer Leslie Kong on the other in the 1960s. So at Bonnie Lee's prompting, Morgan released the track Iroy the Chinese Come Around, dissing Iroy for his collaboration with the Hukim Brothers at Channel One Studios. Iroy, of course, happily responded with the track straight to Derek Morgan's head, in which he roasted Morgan and Prince Jasbo for good measure, with lyrics like, Little Jasbo tried the same, but now it looked like she become lame. Derek Morgan raised the white flag after Iroy's response, and this marked the end of the epic beef which has rocked Jamaica as well as fans all over the world. In a 1995 interview, Iroy would credit this beef for helping to boost his popularity abroad. It's been popularly held that Iroy totally won this contest, and I can't disagree as the man was simply unbeatable with lyrics to spare on top of his natural love for battling on the microphone. But if you really look deeply, the real winner of this feud was none other than Bonnie Stryker Lee, who smiled to the bank in a big way that year. But ultimately, the beauty of this feud was that behind the scenes and all the brutal lyrics, Prince Jasbo and Iroy were actually very good friends and on very good terms throughout the contest. And also, their fans never got testy as we've seen in other celebrated feuds over the years. Their rivalry was marked by pure genius, healthy competition, as well as entertainment for the fans. It marked a high point in both men's careers and is celebrated today as one of the high points and most delightful events in the history of reggae music. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe and until next time, Jobless.